changes are coming to the Saskatchewan government after a major cabinet shuffle was announced today by Premier Brad Wall. Now, Newcap News spoke to MLA for Lloyd Minster Tim McMillan about the changes, and he says it was a change he saw coming. So it's been a, a practice of, of our government and of most governments to change cabinets uh, um, minorly or majorly every two years. And uh, it's now been just over two years since our last cabinet shuffle. Tim McMillan moves from energy and resources into his new role as rural and remote health minister. Now he joins Don McMorris, Kevin Doherty, Donna Harpower and Nancy Hepner as MLAs who have changed ministries. Now new faces to the cabinet include Jennifer Campo, Mark Doherty and Scott Moe. Ministers leaving cabinet include Rob Norris, June DeRude, Randy Weeks and Ken Dayoff. McMillan says he's excited for the new opportunity. Uh, bringing some of the, the experience I have on the more business and financial side of government uh, to healthcare to ensure that the healthcare that we're getting uh, is is at least uh, um, that we're getting value for money for for the money we're putting towards it uh, that our citizens are getting the service that they deserve. Two local residents are in custody and facing several drunk charges after a search of their home. RCMP say it happened on Tuesday when they were there to serve documents and check if release conditions were complied with. A cell phone was found in breach of the release conditions and after further search, 58 grams of marijuana, oxycodon tablets, approximately 12 grams of cocaine and $3,000 were seized. 50-year-old Kevin Clifford Chambers and 43-year-old Beverly Kim Bouchier will appear in Lloydminster Provincial Court on June 10th. Meanwhile, RCMP are asking for the public's help in locating a suspect from a break and enter this morning. It happened around 6.30 at the Sprucewood Pharmacy. Police say both inner and outer doors were smashed to get into the business. An undisclosed amount of prescription drugs was taken. Anyone with information is asked to call RCMP at 306-825-6350 or Crime Stoppers. Well, one of the Border City's biggest art celebrations of the year kicks off next week. Arts Without Borders is going into its seventh year and organizers are already preparing for another big turnout. Now the week-long festival will begin with the downtown Summer Street Fest next Saturday. Chairperson Denise Totman says Street Fest brought in more than 3,000 visitors during the day and hopes this year's attendance will be similar. Why should they come out? To have fun, enjoy the arts, and see what kind of arts that we do have in our community. And like I said, and maybe help us do more. The festival is being hosted around the city, including the Vic Juba Theatre, Lloyd Minster Cultural and Science Centre, as well as The Root. Now, Totman says with so many events going on, they will need more volunteers to come forward. As well, they're also looking to add more work to be put on display. Anything that anybody has, just bring it to us because we're very interested in always adding to our event list. The festival begins June 14th and ends on the 20th. For a whole list of events or how to or to find out how you can volunteer, you can visit artswithoutborders.ca. Well, the beauty industry is ever-changing from the newest anti-aging cream to Botox to facelifting procedures. It's not easy finding which one is right for you. But as Anna Stanzo explores in this week's Healthy Living, there's a new procedure that claims to reduce fine lines, wrinkles, acne and more. And it's not invasive. It's a new type of beauty treatment that claims to improve your skin. And it's currently being offered in this tanning salon. But manager Rory Bullock says red light therapy doesn't emit UV rays like tanning beds do. Instead of giving you a golden complexion, the red light has three main benefits to your skin. It, like I said, already promotes collagen production, so that helps kind of plump up the skin. And with that production, it helps um, get rid of fine lines, wrinkles over time. And it's also really good at diminishing adult body and facial acne. Even Hollywood doctors are backing it up. It's repairing damaged skin and, yeah. it's, and it's creating the production of new collagen. Each session is 20 minutes and staff provide you with protective eyewear. Bullock admits it takes about 30 to 60 days to see results and varies from person to person. But for Gail Metcalf, she hopes it works as she's had problem skin all her life and underwent major surgery on her body last the scar year. scar on, on my stomach is quite big. Um, and I was in probably for about 10 minutes and then I could feel it pulling and drawing. 
So I was quite excited about that because we'll have to see how that goes. As for side effects, Bullock says there are none so far, but adds to make sure to consult your doctor first. First, just because there are some medications people can be on that make you photosensitive, that, and that's the only thing that could happen in there. Um, it has absolutely nothing to do with sunlight or anything, so there's no risk of overexposure or anything like that. I'm so looking forward to seeing what the results are. Numbers weren't available in terms of the success rate. Anna Stanislaw, Newcap News. Well, for most farmers around the region, seeding is all done. As for the weather, it's so far so good for the care of the crops. Graham McCann caught up with a few farmers that are pleased with these well-timed rain showers. Larry Elliott of Elliott Farms has finished seeding for the season, and not a moment too soon. While most people might be disappointed on a rainy day, canola and wheat farmers like Elliott couldn't be happier. The rain is very positive. It's, um, I mean, we're going to need some sunshine now. It's rained, probably in another, you know, depending on the heat, maybe another couple of weeks, we'll need another shot of rain. In. Warren Kalfis, a fellow farmer, finished right in the nick of time. He says while the rain might damper some people's spirits, it is critical. If it doesn't rain, uh, you don't eat, basically. I mean, people don't understand that, but, you know, around the world, if crops don't get rain, there's no food production. Precipitation along with days of moderate sunshine are great for agricultural producers. However, there is one weather factor that would be crippling, and it's something most everyone might agree that the summer doesn't need. Frost would be very bad. Uh, we got canola that's coming up, it's young, and uh, wouldn't be very good for the canola. The wheat and the, and the other crops are a little more hardy. The spring, if everything gets off to a good start, then it's got a better chance of doing, you know, better later on. So um, I think everybody's, you know, had a pretty good run. So far around here anyway, you know, there's some areas that are still way behind and have been too wet to, to seed, so we're lucky right here. Graham McCann, Newcap News.